my name is Aaron Versmeck, and I'm a student at Pace University for my spring course in Emerging Broadband Technologies dealing with IPTV. Uh, my term project is going to be about video compression. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the te uh, techniques that are used for video compression and how this is important to I IPTV now and in the future. Um, the following slides I prepared will talk about some of the techniques and how com video compression works. We'll look at some of the most popular ways and methods that are used today, along with some of the advantages and drawbacks uh, associated with each of those. I'll also have a simple uh, example of video compression um, using just a, a photo um, that represents a video frame. So I uh, hope you enjoy. The object of compression is to reduce the size of the incoming data file without removing useful information. Digital recording and transmission techniques allow for content manipulation to a degree that is impossible with analog signals. Once audio or video is digitized, the content is in the form of data. Such data can be handled in the same way as any other kind of data. Therefore, digital video and audio becomes ideally suited for computer technology and IPTV. Compression is a way of expressing digital audio and video by using less data. Compression is needed for the following reasons. A smaller amount of storage is needed for a given amount of source material. It is expensive to store uncompressed television data. An hour of standard definition television programming requires almost 100 gigabytes of storage. Realizing that a DVD-ROM disc only holds 4.7 gigabytes of data is a true testament to the power of compression. Capacity costs are continually decreasing, and even though products such as digital video recorders and services such as TiVo use hard disk drives for recording television content, it will still be expensive for storing uncompressed digital signals for the immediate future. When working in real time, compression reduces the bandwidth needed. Additionally, compression allows faster than real time transfer between media, for example, between tape and disk. Transmission of 100 gigabytes of data over long distances is very difficult, even impossible with today's networking technologies. Considering that cable and DSL broadband data services operate in the order of only a few megabytes per second, and Ethernet is capable of up to 100 megabytes per second, an IPTV service that is broadcasting digital television signals using these technologies will require reduced bit rates to function. Digital television requires a lot of processing power. Simply watching requires reading the digital pixels and recreating the images, and additionally, if changing the size of the image to fit a window or rewinding or fast forwarding the video uses significant, significant compu computational power. More than 2 million computer operations are needed to read from memory and transfer video to the output buffer with an HDTV frame. This is an example of pressure exerted on computers processing power. Compression algorithm, algorithms reduce the size of video bit streams by taking advantage of the redundancy in the video between frames. Adjacent pixels in an image often have similar values, like color and brightness, and by encoding only the difference between the neighboring pixels, fewer bits are needed to convey this information. This is called spatial redundancy. Also, natural images sometimes contain repeating patterns that could be encoded and then repeated as needed, resulting in fewer bits. Temporal redundancy deals with movements between frames. For the National Television Systems Committee, NTSC, there are 29.97, or approximately 30 frames per second. And in these frames, images sometimes move little or not at all. Compression algor algorithms can save bits by encoding only the difference between adjacent pixels. MPEG, as we'll discuss in a bit, achieves a significant amount of its encoding efficiency by encoding just the directions each little part of the image moves between frames instead of repeating all pixels. Another key to compression is coding redundancy. More frequent patterns can be encoded more efficiently than less frequent ones, such as variable length or Huffman coding, which assigns fewer bits to more common codes. Think of motion between two frames. It has been noticed that small motions either to the left or right are more common than large motions up or down. By encoding the small motions with fewer bits and the larger ones with more, we get a more efficient system. Psychovisual redundancy, or perceptual coding, relies on the limitations of the human senses. For video, the human vision system is better able to resolve differences in brightness than in color, 
and fine detail under low light or low contrast may not be visible. Algorithms that can remove these redundant patterns that are not visible to the human eye can reduce the amount of bits needed to convey the image. Compression techniques and algorithms fall into two groups, lossless and lossy. Lossless compression doesn't remove any information from the source data, which means you can completely recreate the original uncompressed images. When you're dealing with downloading computer programs, lossless compression is used because you need all the information for the program to work properly. This does not guarantee a smaller output file using this method. With lossy compression, you're going to lose some of the information but still maintain the meaning of the signal. In video, this will reduce the image quality by using the techniques I described earlier to remove redundancy. The images will still be good and the provider of the IPTV can vary the amount of lossy compression depending on their network. The more you compress, the lower quality of the image you will see. MPEG uses lossy compression to achieve its results, results as do most video compression algor algorithms. The next two slides are a very basic example of some of the techniques that can be used for compression and removing redundancy. I took stills of a video clip of my daughter walking across the room. You'll be able to see that the background does not change, only the position of my daughter in these frames. Compression algorithms will use spatial redundancy because most of the pixels here will have similar values, as well as temporal redundancy for the small change in her position from frame to frame. My example shows a large movement so you can better have a better, better visual feel for what is happening. Huffman coding can also be used for the more, more common motion of moving left to right, which is what's happening in these frames. But the background in floor does not change, these values won't need to be encoded for each frame, and this will reduce the bits needed. MPEG stands for Moving Pictures Experts Group and is an international standard for audio and video compression. MPEG-1 was the first standard developed for audio video compression by this group. It was intended for use in creating video compact discs. It supported progressive scan frames, but not the interlaced frames of analog television. So standard, full resolution signals were not usable with MPEG-1. Techniques developed here, though, such as motion compensation and bidirectional frame coding are used in later standards. MPEG-2 is the most common and widely used standard for MPEG video today. The major advantage from MPEG-1 is the support of interlacing, so now standard signals can be supported at full resolution, including high-definition television. Five-channel audio surround sound, advanced audio coding, and MPEG-2 support of multiplexing, multi-channel satellite television has resulted in its widespread and highly integrated use. The flexibility of this standard to fit almost any application offsets the complexity, high bandwidth, and demand for processing power that it has. MPEG-3 is not a standard, but I put this in here so you know that it once existed. Its purpose was going to be for high-definition television, but it was soon realized that MPEG-2 could accomplish this, and so MPEG-3 was abandoned. Just as an FYI, there are MPEG-7 and 21 standards that exist, but we won't be discussing them now. MPEG-4 is the most recent standard that is just starting to get a foothold in the market. The improvements made here with advanced video coding allows video signals to be transmitted with half the bandwidth of MPEG-2 signals and high definition signals to be encoded at bit rates below 10 megabytes per second, which is really amazing since I read that an HDTV camera can generate a raw video stream of more than 75 million bytes per second. It has built upon the flexibility of MPEG-2, more efficient ways to capture important information and transport it user control, and stream scalability. There are a vast number of excellent resources that go into great deal detail on MPEG compression technology. I could literally be here for days talking about this subject, so I'd say please explore some of these resources if you want a more thorough and better understanding of the technology. I've outlined here a few of the advantages and disadvantages of using video compression. For the future of IPTV compression is a technology that will continue to be an ever-advancing field of research. As improved algorithms, increased processing power, and cheaper processes are developed, fewer and fewer bits will be needed to carry the information on networks. IPTV will benefit greatly from these advances, advances and so will the customers who will be watching and interacting with television in the future. Well, I hope you enjoyed my uh, presentation on video compression and how it works. Um, it's a very interesting uh, technology 
There are a lot of good resources out there if you're interested. It's a very large and broad topic um, that, uh, as you can tell, is going to be uh, very important to providers who, especially now that they're um, going to be um, offering more high-definition uh, programming, uh, to be able to use this technology to deliver it over networks. So I just want to thank you for watching and I uh, just want to wish my classmates the best of luck on their projects and I look forward to watching them. Thank you.